Here's our breakfast today. They brought it a full hour late, so. All right, good morning. Hey! <laughs> uh, Hillary's writing in. Also, I'll pass it on to our first service director. The front desk team are remarkable. You know, their job is not easy, so we really appreciate it. I will pass it on. The wake show, our cabin shoot, Alex, has been fantastic. Keeps our ice bucket full and has helped with every single request. Also, Amin in Bistro Salomea was wonderful last night, giving us recommendations that bring out the dishes he thought he would like to try, or we would like to try, he would like to try. Uh, uh, another crew member who's remade our day was Fabian, our ultimate balcony dining experience. The ultimate balcony dinner, folks, is phenomenal, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you enjoyed that. He took several photos for us, the whole experience, really fun. Sky Princess has the best team. Thank you, Hillary. We absolutely love the best team. Yeah, and I love that. Hello, good morning. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, Hillary from Emerald Deck Friday is coming your way. Jacob from Aloha Deck Friday is coming your way. That is our final TV theme. It is 10 a.m. and our coffee just got here. We ordered it to be delivered from 8.30 to 9 because we wanted to do the galley tour that's happening after the presentation this morning. So we had an alarm set for eight and then after the alarm went off we fell back asleep and didn't wake up again until they knocked at 10. so we're gonna have breakfast and i guess not walk through the galley but there's plenty of other stuff going on today and honestly i'm happy that we slept in because i don't think we've slept in once on this cruise it's been really busy and tomorrow we have to get off it is time for their flow tell presentation which we think looks really good so we're gonna run out try and catch that it's in the princess theater and it's our last sea day. Lots will be going on. This Flotel presentation is supposed to explain how they operate a ship with this scale and everything. I really wish we would have been able to see the galley, but they also had a seminar about pirates that we started watching from the same guy who did the Bermuda Triangle thing. It's very interesting, but it's on the TV, so you can watch it any time. Well, hello everyone. I'm sure uh, you uh, might have seen me around with uh, maps. Uh, the cruise director, obviously I'm the uh, entertainment director, you might have found that out by now. Uh, behind the scenes, making sure that the entertainment department are, are looked after administration-wise, but also uh, scheduling the shows and all the entertainment around the, uh, the ship as well. Uh, but this is, uh, this is our, our, our uniform store, it seems. So we're going to go to the food and beverage director for this. In addition to all the galleys, bars, restaurants, food preparation areas and stores, uh, stores are actually part of my responsibility as well. Uh, this is actually a very misleading picture because it looks like a small store. It's actually really big and uh, it looks like a maze over there. You can get lost keeping uh, 1,300, over 1,300 inmates well dressed in uh, immaculate uniforms. Uh, keeps him very, very busy. And this is his main uh, job to supply the ship with the uniforms and ensure that all the teammates have them. Um, so these sheets are here. Um, this one up here is Bravo 746s. Uh, these ones here are for Delta, Delta Deck, but as you can see, it's just a mass uh, of, of linen that comes down from the staterooms whenever we do these, uh, these sheets. And actually, this only takes 30 minutes to do. It goes into the tonneau washer, nine tonneau washers, 45 kilos each. So it's an incredible operation, 24 hours a day. We have um, uh, three um, doctors on board and we have nine uh, nurses on board uh, and, para and paramedics. Uh, so it's a team of, um, of, of 12, and then with the administration, I would say it's a team of uh, 14, ready for you if something happened. So many things can happen um, on a cruise. Uh, to give you an example, the last cruise before we came over from Europe, we had a, an, an helicopter a medical evacuation for the coast of uh, Portugal. Um, uh, if those things happen, uh, and actually the guest uh, uh, survived and is doing uh, fantastically, actually. Um, and uh, so you need to have the expertise. You never want to use the expertise, but the expertise is on board. So it's, it's, it's very great to be surrounded with such professionals, actually, yeah. Uh, this is uh, also on the uh, M1, but this is uh, a phrase, and, and I believe, Charles, this is uh, your favorite. This is the biodigester. We have 10 units like this on board. So all the soft food waste that are generated at some cruises, not this cruise, obviously, uh, are uh, feed to this uh, equipment we are adding some enzymes over there and uh, the media it's pretty much steep as long as it takes for it to be biodigested it's simply digested and uh, as a result of it there's a there's a liquid effluent a purely organic 
that can be uh, discharged at certain conditions, conditions when we are at sea. In the back of the room over there, you will see this green piece of equipment. This is dehydrators, hard food waste that we call, uh, that cannot be digested. And this is where we actually process them. And as a result of it, we can load up to 300 kilo uh, every 24 hours. And the result is a, it's a powder that looks kind of like a coffee grinds that uh, Whenever we are in port, uh, there are third party vendors that actually buy this from us and, and recycle it and use it for, for different purposes. So uh, that's how we manage our food waste on board. Every lunch, every day, every dinner, Thank every you. day. Every service after. We were to Princess Case this uh, cruise, and this is also so what may seem like a very simple barbecue and, and a day at the beach. Uh, there is a considerable amount of uh, hours of work and uh, efforts dedicated by a team. Pretty much everything we serve up there has to be brought on, uh, from the ship, prepared and served to you. So it takes a couple of hours to load everything on, on these uh, boats, then unload by our teams and then deliver to the locations, prepare them and serve. Each crew member, sorry, should have at least 10 hours rest uh, in a 24 hour period. Um, and we're constantly approving this on a daily basis, making sure that all of our crew members are, are staying compliant. As you can imagine, on a turnaround day, we, we have the guests disembarking from the previous cruise, uh, and then obviously, you know, for this cruise, uh, yourselves that we're embarking, we're handling, our teams are handling around about eight or 9,000 pieces of luggage uh, in just around four or five hours. Uh, so it's an incredible, uh, incredible operation. Uh, tonight, actually, we have, uh, we've, we've got two dogs on board. Uh, one's called Samsonite, and the other one's called Sniffer. And actually, uh, they are tasked, they will be going around everybody's suitcases tonight, and they're trained to sniff out uh, Princess Cruises, pool towels, uh, bathrobes, uh, tea, uh, 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 teaspoons, cups, and all these other uh, Princess Cruises memorabilia. We have this every seven days. So there are ships that have the, the luxury of having 14-day cruises, so they only have to do it every 14 days. We do it every uh, every seven days. So um, the teammates that um, uh, get this done, uh, you can imagine um, um, Simon is saying 8,000, but that's one way. There are also 8,000 dollars. So it's actually technically tomorrow we offload and unload 16,000 suitcases. So we have the entire team working throughout the day, working hard to make sure that luggage um, gets to and from the right places. Obviously, you have a weekly cycle for the turnovers. What are some of the other cycles you do? Bi-monthly, you know, bi-weekly maintenance and restocking, refueling, re-oiling, I don't know. Okay, so this is gonna last until two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very, uh, that's a, a very good question, sir, but that's for the cruise ship, um, uh, of course, this has so many aspects uh, of it. Fuel is done usually once a cruise. Uh, uh, we are uh, bunkering fuel. Um, and usually that is never in uh, Fort Lauderdale, but that's always in one of the other ports. We have some items like all, all fresh produce um, uh, comes in every week. You saw that one freezer that you saw? We, you have to understand, we have about 15 of those on deck three and deck four. Um, and that is only for, uh, uh, for Congolans department, food and beverage. But we also have loading coming for the, the maritime department that we have or for the technical department uh, that we have. We need light bulbs, uh, we need toilet paper. Um, and so there are uh, various aspects in the loading. Some loadings are every week, some are bi-weekly, some uh, monthly, some quarterly. And uh, that is only the loading part. When it comes to our, uh, our jobs um, that are, for example, safety related, we have uh, daily checks, we have weekly checks, we have monthly checks, we have quarterly uh, uh, checks. We have, uh, when it comes to training of our teammates, um, we have a, a, a various series of mandatory trainings that need to be done by all teammates. Those uh, are uh, quarterly or yearly or uh, 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 twice a year. Uh, those are done when you come on board. Um, so we have in every aspect of life on board, um, we have uh, that planned. I have various colleagues um, uh, that do the same position as, as, as I do, but then also land-based. And if I tell them what we do, they don't believe that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So for example, to give you an idea, uh, tomorrow is the, the 17th and uh, 60 of our teammates of various ranks go home and 60 new teammates 
come on board. There is no hotel in the world, except from a cruise ship, that has similar um, uh, similar situation. So, um, in order to be a manager on board of a cruise ship, you need to be able to uh, be as flexible as possible and understand that dynamic, because it's an enormous uh, dynamic. And that's why also we have um, uh, different contract lengths. So we have contract lengths for our teammates that go up to um, six, seven months, and that starts with three months. So for example, captain, myself, uh, chief engineer, staff captain, uh, we have three months, although it's actually more four months uh, uh, lately. And I would say the more you use your brain, the shorter your contract, I would say is a little bit uh, uh, the case, because you get tired at, at a certain point, uh, of course, because it is a seven day operation. It's 24 hour uh, 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 per day uh, operation. Some people shore side, you go home, we go to our cabin, but you're still on board, if you know what I mean. So it's a totally different dynamic. And I try to do the two hours now in five minutes. Was that okay? <laughs> That's great, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, you use your brain to show the contract, which is why I'm here for 16 months. <laughs> we just left the casino and I cashed out up $5 and one cent. After betting, I got 600 points on this cruise and all I really did was use the free play they gave me and then all the winnings from that. This was not a bad casino considering the ones we've seen on Royal are brutal. My friends, just so everyone knows what's going on, this here is an acrobatic apparatus called the sear wheel or the roo sear. It weighs 47 pounds, it's about 20 kilograms. It's made of steel, aluminum, bolted together with 20 industrial strength bolts and then covered in a PVC tubing. In performing the sear wheel, the acrobat, that's me, has to use perfect balance and use gyroscopic motion and centrifugal force to perform the closest fit in. Which makes doing this on a cruise ship the best idea I've ever had in my life. On November 10th, uh, I attempted to break the Guinness World Record for longest amount of time uh, performing the serial. Uh, I just got the email from Guinness last Tuesday that I, in fact, completed the record and am now the Guinness World Title holder for longest serial duration in the world. <laughs> Alfredo's and we're finally I think gonna eat in here because the line is only a few people ahead of us um, we haven't had a chance to get in here at all this cruise and I think they make calzones here so looking forward to trying it it's got awesome seating right here at the window I was explaining to John that Alfredo's used to be only in the Italian restaurant on sea day lunches and now it's 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Hi. Oh, not yet. I'm sorry. We this is our first time here. <laughs> Thank you. So we're in Alfredo's, and I think we will each order like an anti pasta, and then I want to try the calzone because I don't think you can get it on board anywhere except for here. You can order the pizzas with room service, which we've done. So we'll show you what we get, but I think we'll each have a couple of things. Here are the appetizers. Wow. I didn't see this on the menu. So Amin, our waiter from Bistro Sur La Mer, came over and said hi. And instead of the waiter we were given at first, he said, I will take care of you. And what would you like? Gave us recommendations. And then he added a salad in between the um, antipasto that we ordered. And then he came back and said, I brought out a special papasha bread for you. So I don't know if you can order this or if you have an awesome waiter like us. That's how you get it. But let me see if it's good. It smells really good. <laughs> I would ask if you can try that. Delicious. 
Here's a calzone. Wow. She's bringing back Parmesan. Thank you. Wow, it smells really good. I haven't taken a bite yet, but this looks amazing. Look at all the cheese in there. Is tea time only in the room? No, it's in a dining room too. What do you think of the pizza? It's really good. Does this seem like it's the same pizza that you get at room service? And it's not the same pizza as that slice either. So you get basically three types of pizza on board. Wrapping this one. Oh, thank oh, you so much. You right? Okay, thank thanks you. so much, Amen. Wow, tiramisu looks very fancy. And Amen wrapped up our stuff to go. I would like a comparison of this to the one that we have had in Giovanni's table. The one in Giovanni's table is kind of soupy at times. Is this one kind of very soupy? Mm. No. It's good. No, and it shouldn't be. I know, that looks really nice. So really very solid, very traditional term. So this is really good. And then this is apple strudel, which I said I wasn't gonna try, and Amin said, no, you need to try it. And he brought one. <laughs> All right, we are on our way back to the Princess Theater where we're spending a lot of our time today because Just Plain Phil is doing another seminar about creatures of the deep and like from the monsters to the food and everything else in between. And we kind of like this guy, he's funny. It's a 45 minute thing, which actually already began. He does these funny intros though that are not relevant he's at all. Unbelievably catch. Yeah. He does like PowerPoint presentations. Terrible. He reminds me of Terrible. my grandpa. Terrible PowerPoint presentations. But they're no, funny. they're not terrible. They're just yeah, like they're 20 years but they're funny. old technology. Anyway, it's still an interesting discussion. The last two that we've seen of his. We're going to do that and then look at the powder for what's up tonight. We're not doing tea time today. We thought about it, but dinner is at 530 in Sabatini's and we want to have an appetite for that. And I consider tea time about two meals. That's our next big plan for the evening. Then we have to pack and get our luggage out. Flashlight fish. See the white patches by its eye? They glow in the dark. They're fluorescent. So they give him a path to, walk, to go around at night and search for food because it's just like a flashlight. He can freely go in and out of the water. He can breathe underwater. He can breathe on the land. We need that technology. Call the black swallower. See where the brown of his body ends? When he's been to the buffet one too many times, he said, oh man, I have to have some of that dessert. He just opens his body up and lets his stomach pooch out like that. So it's all stomach from the far left all the way to his backbone. And he can eat and eat and eat. Then as he digests it, he pulls that light colored part in and zips himself back together. This is not Photoshop. This is a red lipped bat fish. Look at the lips on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looks like the lady of the evening, doesn't it? Maybe that's formal night. I know you're gonna laugh. Pedicures with Dr. Fish. Cozumel, a number of places I've seen this done. You sit on a seat and put your feet in there. Those fish will eat all the callus off your feet. Feet are nice and soft and feel good. But whose feet have they chewed on last? What kind of infection are they carrying? The callus is your protection. With that protection gone, People have gone in with serious full body infections to the hospital because they've got infections from this. They have a tank that's head deep for people with psoriasis. So they can go in there and just put out their arms in that and the fish will eat all of that off of them. So it must feel good if you have psoriasis, but it's dangerous. Box jellyfish will kill you in three minutes. A blue ringed octopus, 30 minutes. In Australia, they have one called a sea wasp. It has enough venom to kill 60 of us a fatal sting, three minutes. They sting you with those tentacles which are out in the water. Do we have anybody from New York? 
Everybody move to the other side. <laughs> Stay away. We are hanging out in our cabin. It's about 3.20 and what we should be doing right now is getting our stuff together. We didn't receive any um, bag tags, so we were looking at the options. I think they want to assign them to us, but uh, I'm gonna ask for the gold one tag, which is the independent arrangement departure at 8.50. The latest departure time they have listed is 9 a.m. And that is for people doing the princess post cruise package. The reason we want to do 850 is because we're staying in Fort Lauderdale for two days between the end of this cruise and the beginning of our Liberty of the Seas sailing. So we're going right to our hotel, which is on Fort Lauderdale Beach, and you can see it from the port. I'm a Hilton Diamond member, so we should be able to check in early, but 9 a.m. is really pushing it, especially considering that they're most likely sold out with people that are getting on the ship and they can't get on until we get off. So just like the car rental situation, there is a turnover period that can't be helped. And with more than one ship in port, I would assume this hotel is going to be sold out. I always stay with Hilton because I have good perks with them. One thing that I learned looking for a hotel here in Fort Lauderdale, some of them have resort fees, which is becoming a more common thing. So you have to keep that in mind when you're pricing per day. But you can book a Fort Lauderdale airport hotel, like an economy style room, no perks, no resort amenities. And it's going to be, at least in this week we're staying, around $190 per day. Well, then you can do what we're staying at is called Gallery One. That's $202 per day. We're gonna have a balcony looking over the Fort Lauderdale cruise port. Our hotel has a pool that looks right out on the waterfront. There's a beach right there. And it's an additional like $12 per day. So don't shy away from pricing out hotels that you think are going to be way more expensive because a lot of times when you get to the point of actually confirming the booking, you will see it's not a very large difference between an economy place and a resort within the Hilton brand. Just a word if you're planning, make sure you price out your different options because you, what you assume is going to cost a lot more may not really because everything is expensive in Fort Lauderdale. If you're spending that much, you might as well get bang for your buck. Anyway, that is why we are trying to get off at nine. We are going to give them our bags to process in the morning and we'll be off of the ship and on our way to the hotel, hopefully sitting at the hotel pool before noon tomorrow. We came back from just playing Phil's Creatures of the Deep seminar and watched the rest of his pirate one. He ended that pirate show with a really funny angle on things. He said the pirates would go out and loot and they would come back with today's equivalent of thousands of dollars. They would spend a thousand dollars in one evening at a time when you could buy a whole herd of cattle for ten dollars to put it into perspective he said basically they stole the money and so they had no problem spending it and they would spend it on the women that they really wanted to spend the evening being entertained by and he said men you don't have any lawn mowing or chores and housework to do so treat your woman like a wench and take her out buy her drinks dance and get her jewelry and then women you don't have any cooking cleaning or anything to worry about so you can treat your pi treat your man like a pirate treat him like a king basically i'm not getting it across as well but it's funny and it's a good way to talk about a cruise he is a good performer if you get a chance to go to one of his seminars this is something that princess does and i haven't seen seminars like this on royal or norwegian it's a good way to spend an hour learn some things and he made it fun so we ended up doing three of his seminars right it is 5 30 actually we're late for our dinner time but it's in the sabatinis which i've never been to and I do have a lot of cruises under my belt that have had this restaurant in it. I just never get there. It's Italian. After that, we have to come back and pack because we've been doing other things, which we will reveal to you when we get to the next cruise. John's been shopping. I'm just looking, thank you.
Oh, here's vines. We never even came in here. Here's what? Vines. This is on other ships. This would be my favorite place. Oh yeah, and he said if you do limoncello, do it after dinner with dessert. Which I think was on the Lake Show about it. So this is a very similar menu to Sweden as Giovanni's is on Royal Caribbean. You have an automatic starter that they're going to bring out. Then you can choose soup or salad and an appetizer and then you can do full size of the pasta or full size meat or you can do half and half portions and choose a pasta and a protein so there's a lot to look over before you decide and i wouldn't let anyone rush you into picking what you want to order take your time and read through everything This is like a garlic knot and a couple of bread with sauce. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. It looks like grapes in there. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. It's an air pocket of bread. How cool. That's automatic John got the zucchini. I'm not sure what the other thing is. I was not expecting melted cheese. Got the lamb skewer. That looks really good. So, John got this drink called the Godfather. It's amaretto and what? What do you think? I don't know. It said it's Marlon Brando's favorite. Well, that's pretty good. So the lamb skewer, really tasty. I'm not a huge fan of the zucchini fries, but that cheese toasted bread, of course, how can you go wrong with that? This is the fondue soup. Which looks really good. Can I that? Yes, please. What about you, sir? Thank you. Um, I don't know. Does it need it? Yes, that's right. Okay. That's has me. Thank you. This is something I heard about first on the morning show, or the wake show. Cruise director Matt was saying this is like fondue in a bowl, and that's actually what it's called on the menu, is fondue. It's got some toppings on it, which I think include a celery oil. Ah, let's see. has an odd resemblance to the cheese sauce on those loaded fries. It's like a white version. I was telling John, the loaded fries on here, if you order them for room service, taste like if you took Kraft macaroni and cheese powder and added milk and water. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's really good, but that's, the, that's what I immediately think of. And this is like a white ch cheddar version of that flavor. It's good though. There's the seafood linguine and the lamb tortellini. Prosciutto wrapped tenderloin. Probably for you, sir. Pepper, sir. Sure, yes. thank you. Please enjoy. Thank you. Soul piccata. Okay, chef specialty it means you're gonna try one of those desserts. There okay. are four, like a, like a uh, bite size. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, we like chocolate, go put the one on high. Oh, these, I see. We have our dessert, which is the chef's selection. It's a sampling of everything. 
and the tiramisu John Bad, a full size one, which has almost the exact same size serving. So I would recommend trying them all. How pretty. It's very pretty. It's not bad, but it's not tiramisu. It's, I can't see it being in love with it, but it's not tiramisu. It's not what I would call it. So John is ranked. Yes, sir. Yeah, I would put the berries behind the tiramisu just because I would be really disappointed if I ordered those and just got fresh berries and cream on top. But if you want something really light, Right. we are back in the cabin after dinner. Sabatini's was really good and I think they do a nice job of controlling portion sizes in a way that I think is missing on Royal Caribbean. They might believe on Royal that it's better to just give more food. It's not. I like the presentation. I thought there was plenty of food. John's um, pasta dish had three tortellini on it. That's plenty when you're eating a five course meal, you know. It's one little aspect of the whole thing. And when they bring out too much in the course, I know how much I ultimately should be eating in a meal. But I also believe when I'm paying for a specialty dining venue that you should trust the chef to be presenting you with the um, optimal way of consuming whatever you've ordered. I think they do a really good job of giving you the right amount all the way to the desserts where you get the chef's tasting and you have four different desserts and there are two or three bites of each. That's plenty. And I still am really full, but it's not uncomfortable and like debilitating for the rest of the night. I really liked that place. We wanted to go to an 8.30 show, but it's almost eight right now. Let me show you our closet. So we're gonna be in here packing instead of going to the show so that we can have our luggage out on time. Room store did bring us the luggage tags I asked for. So we are all set and it's perfect. We are at one hour before our luggage should be put out. So John is organizing his perfectly folded laundry. And at some point, maybe we will show you a comparison of how he packs and how I pack. It's crazy. Like he perfectly folds here. Look at this. It's all neat and organized. That is probably, what is this, tomorrow's outfit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got this all planned out. That's the least folded of everything because it has a belt on it. But if it didn't have the belt, it would be perfectly flat. I was just talking to you guys on my phone and I got an alert that my iPhone is out of storage. We left home, what, I guess over two weeks ago now. And we've been filming all day, every day, basically. But I've never received a notice like that. And John got me the biggest memory phone I've ever had and we have like two trillibytes on the cloud so I don't know yikes we better get some processing done over the next couple of days in Florida so that we can film so yeah anyway I was going to say in conclusion to this packing thing John is very organized and neat and he folds everything when he takes it off I do the wad and stuff method my luggage comes you open it up and it's basically an explosion right after you unzip it maybe i'll learn to pack neatly someday but i just don't see an advantage to being this organized it takes a lot of time and you still end up wrinkly yeah but then you can just stack it into the suitcase in quick little stacks and it's easy no i've got an hour to be packed and what i'm gonna do is open my suitcase shove it in sit on it and zip it and it's good we're in Vista Lounge for our last show of the cruise, this RJ Cantu comedy magic show. And it's at 10.30. We got our luggage out just in time and we are having our final drinks made out of the gin we got on board. We still have two Bud Lights and two little mini bottles, um, but we'll just take those off with us. Let's shuffle the deck real quick. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention they're, they're invisible. No, hi sir. What's your name? Roger, big round of applause for Roger, ladies and gentlemen. Roger, I want you to pick a card, any card. Don't let me see it. Don't let me see it, Roger. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Oh, by the way, this is my invisible watch. All right, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Roger, did you see the table move? Just say yes, Roger, just say yes. Roger, because check this out. The cards 
have gone from invisible to visible, but not only did the cards become visible, so did my watch. We are back in the cabin. It's 11.15. RJ Cantu, who is a comedy magician, he did some really good tricks that we were just talking about. I know how he did one of them, and there was one where he put a spike in a block and then pushed his hand down, let the audience randomly pick which ones he was going to slam his hand down on, and then the last standing one had the spike in it somehow. So that was a good last show of the cruise, I think. And we actually get an hour back tomorrow. This is the best thing to get on the last Mother day of a drinking. cruise. You go to bed and then at two in the morning, it becomes one in the morning. It is recapturing the time you lost on the day that you had to jump forward. So- Is that an elite perk? Yeah, everybody else still on the irregular time. I contacted our room steward and I just told him the disembarkation group I wanted to be in. I said, please give me gold one luggage tags. And when we came back from dinner, they were on our table. He gave me five of them. I mean, he must have looked in our closet and thought we actually packed that into five bags. <laughs> but whatever, he gave me the one I wanted, which means we are going to disembark at 850. I'm never in the room beyond maybe 745. I like to get out because I know that the Room stewards have a lot of work to do on turnaround day. We just noticed that our next door neighbor is not a neighbor, it's an empty cabin. So I've been telling John to turn the TV down for no reason all week. <laughs> okay, this has been a really nice cruise. There are some things that they can improve on. And I think I will do a recap video in our hotel room tomorrow. I think that the medallion has exponentially improved the cruising experience. There are so many potential benefits and uses for it that I know it's it's having an issue with people accepting that this will be a new thing. But once you just get over that and accept that that is the future of at least princess cruising and learn how to use it, you guys are going to love everything that it has to offer, at least for the period of time before they figure out how to monetize anything you can do on there. This is a very small window, I'm afraid, where we can get all this free use out of it and enjoy. Thank you for coming with us and stick around. After this set of videos, we will have the Liberty of the Seas coming up and we're going to be sailing in a panoramic suite on that cruise. And oh my goodness, I don't know yet what the experience is gonna be, but I'm pretty certain it's gonna be fantastic and John, got us a present that's going to arrive while we're at the hotel in Florida that's going to change my YouTube channel forever. Good morning from Fort Lauderdale. We are back and it's about 7.45 right now. It's nice and cool at the moment because the sun is not breaking through those clouds yet. John just left. He's going to run up to the photo gallery and try and get the photo that they included with our ultimate balcony dinner. We went up and ordered it yesterday, but that place was absolutely swarming with people and so busy. You have to place the order and then go back and retrieve it. So he's trying to go and get that plus the photo of the Sky Princess that they left the book in our cabin saying we got a free print of or something. The ship did port in a different terminal than we took off from. So I know a lot of people who have vehicles here or are concerned about how they're getting back to their cars are kind of stressed out, but we're just winging it. I didn't book a lift or anything. I'll do that once we're off of the ship. Anyway, thank you for coming on this cruise with us. It's been a really nice trip overall. For the most part, Princess really delivered and I'm so glad to be back on a ship of theirs. We have one more cruise before we head back to Texas, and that will be the end of our cruising for this year. And I'm really thankful that we ended up getting, let's see, seven cruises in this year in our first year back. And they all started in October. So it has been quite a busy couple of months. I hope that we will continue cruising. Like we do have a really 10 day long big cruise planned starting in January, no, February. So that'll be to the Panama Canal, but it's a different route. Last time that you went to the Panama Canal with me, it was a full transit. And this time it's a partial transit, 10 days out of Florida, back to Florida. We actually have 
five cruises booked from now until March, but I believe we're probably going to cancel a couple of them because I've got, we have just some things we need to get squared away at home and they're all paid off and you know, it's just a matter of getting the time away from home, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you again for coming with us. I hope you've enjoyed this cruise and we will see you on the next trip. How busy was it in the photo gallery? Um, not really. Oh, good. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe that and this. Oh, there is the Sky Princess. Yeah. Except that book they gave us seemed like it had a larger space for a photo than That's that. That's what I thought too, so. We'll see when we get home. Let's <laughs> just figure it out. <laughs> okay. Here is what's left of our mini bar. We have two bottles of gin, two Bud Lights, and two Diet Cokes. This orange juice we received with breakfast yesterday and didn't drink it. And then there was some wine left from our dinner. I think that was the steakhouse. So the mini bar setup is a nice little perk and you will be able to pull from it all week and probably still have some left over. We are off. It's about 8.20. I thought John was going to experience a disembarkation lounge for the first time because we have done self like walk off every time up until now and our disembarkation time was not until 8.50 but as soon as we got to the elite lounge they said all the bag tags are out so just go off. So we literally didn't stop walking or even get in. They won't let us into the elite lounge. We're going to try and capture a lift from here and I'll show you what happens when we get to our hotel. This is so cool.